Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mr. Tardis, and we're doing it again. We're diving into the rabbit hole of reactionary conservative YouTube, specifically in regards to what they think about Doctor Who. And many people have asked me to cover the latest video from our favourite conservative Canadian, Bolstrek. This latest video, Doctor Who and Russell T. Davis, the joke that keeps on giving, comes to us from Bolstrek. It was released almost two weeks ago, I'm just a bit late to covering it. If you folks want to know what Bolstrek's deal is, I'll put a link in the description to previous videos where I've covered covered his frankly unhinged rants on Doctor Who, his obsession with race, specifically whiteness, his constant crying and triggering over any sort of diversity in front of or behind the camera, and just his general inability to watch any media that doesn't have white people in it. But before we dive into this topic, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more Doctor Who reactions and breakdowns and upcoming reviews of the upcoming era of Doctor Who. Live streams, news, reactions, if you enjoy any of that, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button as well. Leave any comment down below to appease the almighty algorithm and you can also support me on Patreon that helps to keep the lights on here. My latest video is an in-depth review of 1999's Curse of Fate or Death, the comic relief special written by Stephen Moffat and starring Rowan Atkinson as the Doctor. That video is available to patrons right now. They have early access to it so be sure to check out my Patreon where you can help to support the channel and get loads of perks as well. So let's dive into Doctor Who and Russell T Davis, the joke that keeps on giving. Let's see what Bolstrek has to say. Ah, Doctor Who and Russell, the pompous twit, are the jokes that just keep on giving. Remember back in 2018, when we wanted to save the show from itself, then we gave up on saving it, and started concentrating on exposing the reasons why things had gotten to such a point. Well, that's been over- Saving it from what, though? We've gone over his videos from back in 2018, including but not limited to his now-deleted video of Demons of the Punjab, where he claimed that Doctor Who Series 11 in 2018 was a Jewish conspiracy to get rid of all of the white people from the BBC. We are now seeing the term racialized coming up quite often, and it is now being actively used in diversity quotas. In essence, governments are now giving preferential treatment to certain religious groups, which is becoming part of the replacement process. Why is this relevant to Doctor Who in 2018? Well, the BBC, as a governmental institution, is part of this replacement process. No, I'm not kidding. He actually said that. And then he doubled down on Twitter. So we're 15 seconds in, and what Bolstrek is saying that he tried to save Doctor Who from was from the Jews. Great start. Let's carry on for quite some time too. Nobody really cares about this show anymore. I mean, who cares how that pile of vomit that's been baking in the sun on the sidewalk for the past week got there? You're just glad it's somebody else's problem. I mean, I mean, this is like the fifth video that you've done after saying that you'd never talk about Doctor Who ever again. So, uh, you know, you seem to be really attracted to that supposed piece of shit on the sidewalk. Because dealing with it is just going to be yucky. And Doctor Who has become Disney's problem now. It's like when your ex wife marries the antichrist they'll be each other's problem bolstrek as an actual divorced man the most divorced man who i've ever seen on the internet uh this seems to hit a bit too close to home now nobody cares about exposing or saving this garbage anymore now we're just laughing at it the entertainment industry doesn't give us much comedy anymore watching people franchises, and movie studios implode under the weight of years of their own stupidity is our new comedy and it's glorious. Citation needed. We all had a good laugh when Russell the pompous twit expressed his disappointment about the ratings for his poop dumping of specials that culminated in the reveal of Dr. Nutty and the already fired Princess Zumi. Do I think he's just made that up. From what I can see, there has been, like, no interview or no public statement of Russell T. Davis disappointed at the viewing figures of the four specials from last year. In fact, the only thing that I can think of is Russell T. Davis on Instagram celebrating the Star Beast being viewed by more than 9 million people on the BBC iPlayer and on the channel. It would really, really help his case for Bolstrek to, you know, put that on screen, you know, that citation of Russell T. Davis apparently being really disappointed with the viewing figures, but he's clearly not going to do that because it doesn't exist. He's just made it up. He's lying, obviously. Always lying. Doctor Who is my new Batwoman. So bad that the comedy writes itself. At now, Batwoman is a really interesting reference for him to make here, because he's done trailer reactions and episode breakdowns for Batwoman before, and literally, the only complaints he had, using his words, were the diversity hires. That's all he had. It was the women, it was the people of colour, 
that was his issue with Batgirl. Henceforth to be known as Diversity Hire Number 5. Diversity Hire Number 5 tells Woke Batman that it found one of Batman's toys in some dude, and once again, Woke Batman gets misgendered. Great work, Diversity Hire Number 5. So by proxy, that's clearly just his issue with modern Doctor Who. Otherwise, he would, you know, cite actual examples and specifics. At least the Star Trek franchise gave us Picard Season 3, which allowed us one more chance to remember how awesome things once were. Doctor Who and Russell the Pompous Twit, they gave us Doctor Who being condescended to by Tiddlywinks, and then the review- uh, Now, for this specific screenshot, I know that he's referring to Yasmin Finney when he says Tiddlywinks, but considering Donna's relationship with the Doctor and all the condescending that she did to him over the course of her run as a companion, this could, in practical terms, apply to either of these two. Th th I don't see what the problem is here great big out space don'ts descended to by tiddlywinks and then the reveal of the charismatically challenged and pantsless dr nutty the level of russell the pompous twits self-delusion is actually quite astounding this man was somehow oblivious to the fact that this was his last chance to save the show i mean specifics would be helpful you know with, with the exception of the pantsless doctor, you know, actual arguments or specifics would really help your case here, but you're not really interested in that. I knew all along how this was going to turn out, and yet people called me names, and some grifters even made four-hour live streams about it. At least it gave Mr. B okay. He's going to refer to me as Mr. Birdie McWoke Pants or whatever. But firstly, because we did go over his initial reaction to Russell T. Davis coming back before Shooter Gatwell was cast as the Doctor, you'll remember him saying that if the next Doctor is anyone other than a straight white British male, then you could write the show off. So he categorically never gave it a chance because he is so obsessed with identity politics. One of his first responsibilities will be to decide who takes over the TARDIS following Jodie Whittaker's exit. And this will be our chance to make our first judgment call. If it ends up being anything other than a straight white British male, then there's no point holding out hope any further. It will be more of the same, just much better written. Anybody outside of that specific identity means that you could write off an entire British institution. That's how shallow Bolstrek's arguments are. That's how obsessed with identity politics he is and how he wants to enforce that onto a show. But anyway, he's going to call me Mr. McBeardy Woke Pants or whatever. Live streams about it. At least it gave Mr. Beardy Woke Pants Piss Baby reviews some content. Because nobody watches his videos unless he's crying about people that he wishes he could be. Don't forget to like- Okay, firstly, I've never done a four-hour live stream dedicated to a specific person. That's just a lie. I have done four-hour live streams about- a massive assortment of topics. Secondly, I think he's just really butthurt that many of my videos talking about Bolstrek tend to ratio the original videos that he's made, despite him having more subscribers than me. And thirdly, people don't just watch my videos when I do drama, they watch my videos when I break down how long it takes for each doctor to touch grass. This has got 41,000 views. What the hell? My most watched videos don't even have anything to do with drama. The history of the Daleks, the top 50 Doctor Who scenes, the abandoned Doctor Who story arc, how every Doctor was announced. Yeah. Like, share, and subscribe, and prepare yourself for a dump truck load of projection. Watch out, Tubby's putting on his big boy pants. Also, why do I feel that most of your followers should be on some kind of list? So yeah, somehow this show- it's an actual parody. Like, he is the reactionary that you would make fun of in order to poke fun at reactionary and conservative ideology. I don't have any arguments against you. I don't have anything to rebuke what you're saying. You're clearly right about everything, but I'm just going to call you a pedophile. It's like that meme with the guy with the two buttons sweating. He's like, oh, could I actually rebuke what he says, or can I just call him and his audience pedophiles? This is just intensely validating, because Bolstrek in this case is right. I have done a lot of videos breaking his videos down, and, and his his perspective and the broader conservative reactionary angle of YouTube when it comes to Doctor Who. But the fact that he never brought up a time when I was wrong, a time when I might have misrepresented him, and he never even attempted a counter-argument other than his Birdie McWoke pants or whatever with his big boy pants, like, it's so validating because he knows he's got nothing and that clearly upsets him. So yeah, somehow this show that we used to love now has a fan base composed nearly entirely of degenerates, deviants, and people that should be on lists. How did this happen? Firstly, citation needed, but also secondly, like, 
just saying the current audience for Doctor Who are degenerates, they're paedophiles, etc. Like, it's it's just completely unhinged. It, like, it's just, this is somebody who absolutely knows that he's got nothing, that knows that his ideology and that his arguments have nothing to substantiate them. This is the epitome of a feels over reels video, and it's just nothing but shallow name calling. He has nothing. Happen, you ask? Well, as I said, little ones, the time for exposure is over. I have years of videos on that very subject. Our focus now is laughter. Yes, you have years of videos on that subject. When you hardly name anything specific that happens in the episodes itself or the subjective quality of the show, just who's making it and who's in front of and behind the camera. From the quote diversity hires to Russell T. Davis being a gay man, Shooty Gatwa being queer, Jodie Whittaker being a woman, etc. That has been since almost day one of you covering Doctor Who on your channel channel, that's been what you've been talking about almost exclusively. Like watching a friend lop off one of his testicles, and then says he's thinking about lopping off the other one. You say, don't do that, man. I'm just thinking of your own good. You try to tell him why lopping off the other testicle is a terrible idea, but he just laughs at you. We're two and a half minutes in, and we don't have a single specific. No wonder Bolstrak needs to go on these lengthy diatribes talking about this hypothetical situation in these heightened scenarios where they have to lob off testicles or there's excrement on the path or whatever. Like, because he doesn't have anything that actually aligns with reality because if he had them he'd put them on the screen this isn't an unscripted live stream this is a video that he's scripted recorded and edited he could actually put the examples on screen and he doesn't because he knows he's got nothing and calls you toxic then you become frustrated and walk away and he just lops off the other testicle anyway and doesn't understand why he's bleeding to death you could say i told you so and honestly you do that for a bit under your breath then you say to hell with it and just continue walking away this video is only nine minutes long and he's spending a relatively long amount of time just describing made-up hypothetical scenarios that should say a lot about the stability of his position way to let the paramedics deal with it at least they'll have a story to tell. So as I said, we're now just going to sit here and laugh as reality mixed with more delusion starts to settle in for our nutless wonders. Russell the pompous- As reality mixed with more delusion? What is he even on about? Like, genuinely, what is he on about? Quit says the end of the BBC is undoubtedly on its way. Really, Russell? Why would that be? I mean, surely they still make the same high-quality content they always did. No, instead they're focusing on things like glorifying the story of our friend who nearly bled to death after lopping off his testicles. Doctor Who showrunner. They're focusing on making Doctor Who is the long and short of what Bolstrek's argument is. Never mind the fact that the BBC has, what, six or seven channels, most of them run 24-7, and Doctor Who is only an hour-long show, so... They're clearly making other stuff, but Bolstrek won't name a single specific. Is Doctor Who really the only thing that Bolstrek kind of knows the BBC for? He has no, like, other modern frame of reference, whether it be the crime dramas like Line of Duty or Happy Valley, or the comedies like Ghosts or Here We Go, or the documentaries like the David Attenborough output and the panorama and stuff. Like, genuinely, is it just Doctor Who that you have an issue with? Please, show me that you've touched grass once in your life and name another BBC show that you take issue with. With. Runner is trying to ensure that the fantasy drama outlasts the broadcaster. Ah yes, I forgot that it's now a fantasy show and no longer a science fiction show. Wait, fantasy drama isn't in quotes here. Like, this is The Guardian's editorialization of the topic. So Russell never even said this, and even if he did say fantasy drama, what's the issue with that? Like, Stephen Moffat's Series 5 in 2010, I think would definitely fit into fantasy drama. The fairy tale vibes, the use of literally remembering the Doctor back into reality, that's not hard sci-fi, that's definitely tiptoeing more into fantasy. Like, what is the issue with this? Will Bolstrak actually say what the issue is here? Or is he just going to posture and virtue signal because he has to say something bad about everything that Russell says? fantasy and Russell the pompous twit's head that his comedy of errors last fall was a work of pure unadulterated genius. Instead of science fiction stories, we're talking about getting snowmanned. Yeah, I looked that one up, and good lord! That's Is he referring to Shooty Gatwa's doctor having a snowman land on him in the Christmas special? Because the fact that Bolstrek thought of being snowmanned, don't look it up, <laughs> kind of shows that Bolstrek is the one with some very uh, unchecked fetishes. This is a massive self-report, and it's so funny. That's what happens when you surround yourself with nothing but degenerates, and deviants. You end up thinking that this is how everyone thinks, when in reality, it's just a small fraction of the population 
while the rest of the population can't stand you people, according to the head. Okay, once again, citation needed because the polling that we have, the data that we have in the UK shows that the BBC as a broadcaster has an approval rating in the low 90s. A couple of years ago, it was the mid to the high 90s. So yeah, it has dropped a couple of percentage points, but it is just a couple of percentage points. Approval ratings at like what, 92 to 93%? That's still overwhelmingly positive. So what is Bolstruck referring to? According to the head of one of BBC's most most successful franchises, past tense, broadcaster's end is inevitable. And why would that be, Russell? I mean, surely the fact that they've been making programming that's less appealing to the average person than a bleeding anal cyst had nothing to do with it. Speaking on Such as. So, the BBC is not just the Doctor Who machine. What else are you referring to? If you think that eight to nine hours of television per calendar year is going to be the downfall of an entire broadcaster that's over a century old at this point, that's a you delusion and you need to back that up. Speaking on television podcasts they like to watch, not this television they don't, Doctor Who showrunner Russell the Pompous Twit explains that there is a good reason for the fantasy drama being co-produced with Disney. They're both into catering to degenerates, deviants, and narcissists while losing millions. Now, now, he's used that term degenerates and deviants several times over the course of this video, and we're only a few minutes in. Like I said, this is a scripted video. The term degenerates has a very specific modern connotation. It's a Nazi term. And I know what some of you people are thinking. Mr. Tardis, you can't just call people that you don't like Nazis. And you're right, I can't do that. I don't do that. I only call people Nazis when they say and do Nazi shit. Bolstrek is undoubtedly here saying and doing Nazi shit. The Nazis did not invent the term degeneracy, obviously not. But it's a word that is very specifically coded to their ideology. There was even something in the 1930s and the 1940s in Germany, degenerate art. Degenerate art was a term adopted in the 1920s by the Nazi party in Germany to describe modern art. Modern in this case meaning art that was done by Jewish people, LGBTQ plus people, etc, etc. Degenerate art was the title of a 1937 exhibition held by the Nazis in Munich. Designed to inflame public opinion against modernism, the exhibition subsequently travelled to several other cities in Germany and Austria. While modern styles of art were prohibited, the Nazis promoted paintings and sculptures that were traditional in manner and that exalted the blood and soil values of racial purity, militarism, and obedience. Similar restrictions were placed upon music, which was expected to be tonal and free of jazz influences because jazz was considered degenerate because it was considered to be made by black people. Disapproved music was termed degenerate music. Films and plays were also censored. Now, in the modern context, you only hear the word degenerate or degeneracy used in two contexts. People making fun of Nazis and Nazis. Bolstrick is not using that term in a comedic or ironic context, though. He's using it literally. He thinks that art made by Russell T. Davis, a gay man, or art starring gay men or black men like Shuti Gatwa is degenerate. It's a very specific word choice. It's Nazi shit. This isn't even a new development for Bolstrek. Back in 2018, he thought that Demons of the Punjab was a Jewish conspiracy to get rid of all of the white people at the BBC. His only issue that he's ever cited with the BBC specifically as an organisation, as a collective, as opposed to just a Doctor Who factory, was its diversity hiring. Just go back to his quote debate with JX a few years back, when his main issue with the BBC was the diversity quotas that he'd never even read and didn't even understand. He admitted in that debate he hadn't read them for several years as as just having them as targets i see really no issue in that at all certainly not and, the uh, same issue is, that you're describing yeah and this is also why i'm going to be doing another video on it because i know it has changed over time so i want to read the most up-to-date version of the document um and i'm still basing it on my well, the, the way I read the document back in say 2017 the version i read was the uh, 2017 version oh no sorry the 2016 version 2016 yeah and it was originally a strategy it was it was implemented i'm saying i think it was 2018 or 2019 i do need to reread the strategy but it's it's not even so much the strategy itself it for me this goes with anything whereas there's no there's no there doesn't appear to be anywhere in the document unless you can point it out to me uh that i'm that i'm wrong but i don't think that there is anywhere in the document where it describes these targets as being rigid quotas 
And this is why Bolstrak hardly ever cites any specifics, never talks about specific moments in the episode, with the exception of, we, we looked over this review of the Star Beast, him looking at the background extras, seeing who was white. Then we have a bunch of unit soldiers consisting of white dudes and white ladies, and I think to myself, wait, this kind of thing isn't allowable anymore. But don't worry, little ones, all will make sense shortly. Then, in a mind-blowing attempt at subtlety, as Tiddlywinks and Donna are walking down the street, a bunch of white dudes drive by on bikes and are laughing at Tiddlywinks while calling them Jason. Then the white soldier dude apologizes for the stares, and wheelchair lady gets pissy. Then Major Singh is here to keep white army dudes in line, but they tell him to get lost and he does. Then they escape through the house of a lazy white dude, representative of the plebs, because Russell couldn't help himself. Then blowy blowy boom boom. It's an obsession with racial purity, aka Nazi shit. Perfect fit. It means that its survival doesn't require the continued existence of the BBC. While Disney might actually be more degenerate than the modern BBC. He's repeating the word again. Like I said, it's very deliberate. And in this context, what does that even mean? How is Disney more, quote, degenerate than the BBC? How? What he, I, I know what he's on about. He's on about the diversity casting or whatever. People of colour in front of and behind the camera, queer people getting involved in making the media, etc. I know that's what he means, but why won't he say it? Because he knows that it's just feels over reels. See, so you might have a point there. And I'm sure Disney will be around forever because they just continue making such high quality content that keeps pleasing everyone. I mean, that Acolyte trailer is quite something to behold, and the humbleness of everybody involved is quite impressive. You've got to look at- Like, what's the issue that he had with the Acolyte trailer? What's the supposed humbleness of those involved? He, he's not showing anything, he's not cited anything. The screen here is still just the Guardian article with Russell T. Davis. Like, he, he's not cited anything. He's given no examples. This is not convincing in the long term at the end of the BBC, which is undoubtedly on its way in some shape or form. You don't say, Russell. You don't say. Maybe there's a god after all. Oh no, where will the degenerates get their next paycheck? What a pickle. You've got to look in the long term at the end of the BBC. Is Doctor Who going to die then? I know many people wish it would. No, you've got to prepare for that kind of stuff. As long as the degenerates at Disney keep stealing people's money. Is that what you mean by preparing, Russell? Like, de degenerates and stealing money. This is very Jewish coded from Bolstrek. <laughs> but in this context, how is Disney stealing money? Like, genuinely, how? Like, they're, they're a company that makes media and franchises and merchandise. People can choose to buy the merchandise, they can choose to subscribe to their streaming service, they can choose to visit their movies, etc, etc. Like, specifically, what are they stealing? Why use that specific language? W what are they doing to steal from audiences? Unless it's a more broader cultural thing, like they're stealing culture or whatever. They're stealing values. Which, once again, Nazi shit. Theft? Theft is wrong, Russell, and that makes baby Jesus cry. You should know that, Russell, being the man of virtue you are. The lack of- Like, see, he doesn't name a single specific, he just does a, what is it, a Simpsons reference? Baby Jesus cry? Lavish BBC budgets is another reason that Davies claims Doctor Who's future requires Disney's involvement. I mean, somebody has to pay the checkboxes overtime. Those 1990 level effects ain't gonna make themselves. Part this is what we were on about with his review of the Halloween apocalypse back in 2021, when he claimed that the special effects in that episode, it was the fault of diversity hires, aka women and queer people and people of colour can't do special effects. And that was just his argument. The episode begins with terrible green screen, which underscores the complete lack of talent and initiative of the BBC diversity hires in the effects department. This white supremacy that is the undercurrent, or should I say overcurrent, of his Doctor Who coverage. Like, it's not remotely subtle. When people watch my videos and they're like, oh, Bolstrek didn't used to be like this. Yes, he did. Happens when you hire checkboxes who have no idea what they're doing, as Doctor Who needs to be up there with- Like, like who? Who would, like, specifically who? Can you name one of these checkboxes? Are these checkboxes in the room with us right now? as Doctor Who needs to be up there with the big hitters, if by that you mean the Acolyte, the Marvels, She-Hulk, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, and a fat dude's ass just after downing a bottle of liquid X-Lax, then yeah, you'll fit right in. If Disney collapsed- I, That was so incoherent and stupid, I don't even think I should dignify it by asking for examples.
Tomorrow, something so many people wish for in their prayers every evening, and we all had to go back to making Doctor Who on a normal BBC budget. You mean like back when the show was awesome in the 60s, 70s, and 80s? You know what? Yeah, you're a moron. We'd all rally round. Interestingly, though, he doesn't cite the original Russell T. Davis era from 2005 to 2009 as one of these high point moments for Doctor Who. Because he now has to, like, backtrack on that because Rusty Davis is a queer man and Bolstrek can't hack that anymore. He would now, going back, consider that original run of Doctor Who, starring Christopher Eccleston, Billy Piper, and David Tennant, he would now consider that to be degenerate Doctor Who. And we know this because when Bolstrek initially reacted to Rusty Davis being brought back as the showrunner, Bolstrek said that Rusty Davis was the best showrunner since Philip Hinchcliffe, who was the showrunner in the mid-1970s. So why does he not include Russell T. Davis in that supposed golden age of Doctor Who? Because he now, several years later and further being radicalized by Nazi shit, considers that to be degenerate. It's pretty simple and clear to anybody watching. But also, 60s, 70s, and 80s Doctor Who, like, that was still political. That still had moments of diverse casting. Like, he's not going to cite a single specific. He's just going to point to a 30-year time span and say, yeah, that was when it was good. Can't tell you why, though. And suddenly the stories would become claustrophobic ghost stories, he says. Well... Seeing as you've completely lost your ability to write something that isn't trash, I'm sure that this is what you and your diverse team of creatives would come up with. Just and if he's talking about the recent specials in 2023, we've gone over his reaction to the Star Beast. He was just complaining about the lack of white people. He was looking at the extras and the background artists and saying, is that person white? Is that person white? He was so obsessed with whiteness in the Star Beast that when he saw Captain Chan, played by actor Jamie Cho, he thought he was white. Then the unit white dudes and ladies get brain scanned, and now they're evil, so everything makes sense again. He thought Jamie Cho, playing Colonel Chan, was white. Just gotta make sure that Casper isn't white anymore. A lot of people would very much like that. If it would mean can't- Once again, just a completely made up example that has no basis in reality. Like, cause he doesn't have anything in reality, he just has to make up these hypotheticals. It's like Hannah Solo or Emma Jones or whatever, like gender bending casting that they want to make up to try and prove a point. Cancellation, then yeah, I'm sure people would like that. So I'm not saying you have to have this happen. Cancellation will come eventually, Russell. You can't keep stealing people's money forever. But while it's happening elsewhere... Wait, what does it mean by stealing money? What? I think it's unfair that it doesn't happen to Doctor Who. Life is unfair, Russell. I mean, there are many talented people out there that will never see their creations come to life because money keeps being wasted on your portrait of narcissistic self-wankery. Christ, Russell, most people would rather watch 60 minutes of a donkey taking a shit. Davies' comments are part of an interview with podcasters Jeff Lloyd and Sarah Barron on topics including camera techniques, something the checkboxes don't understand. <laughs> Code for black people and queer people and women don't know how to operate a camera. Script writing, to which the checkboxes consists of me, me, me. And the black people, women, and queer people can't write scripts. The unlikeliness of Disney creating a Doctor Who Disneyland style experience, complete with a statue of Dr. Nutty without pants and Russell the pompous twit drooling. Given that a previous Cardiff-based experience closed due to a lack of profitability, surely it had nothing to do with the brilliance of Chibs the Idiot, costing taxpayers... That Doctor Who experience closed in mid-2017, when Stephen Moffat was the incumbent showrunner and Peter Capaldi was the incumbent Doctor. This had nothing to do with Chris Chibnall or his era of the show with Jodie Whittaker. This was a year before that. Profitability, surely it had nothing to do with the brilliance of Chibs the Idiot, costing taxpayers 1.1 million pounds. That Doctor Who experience lost a lot of money. Thievery. That's what these people do. Thievery. I know a guy that claims- like, that's like a pretty disingenuous framing of the full Enterprise. I don't blame Bolstrek specifically for this misunderstanding. I mainly blame The Guardian for framing it like this. The Doctor Who experience, which closed in September 2017, so once again had nothing to do with Chris Chibnall or Jodie Whittaker, built on land in Cardiff Bay leased from the Welsh government, leaving taxpayers with a £1.1 million bill. So this was a bill that was always going to have to be paid, regardless of whether or not it closed. And also for Doctor Who's 60th anniversary, the BBC put together this document for the show's economic impact in Wales. Um, since the show came back in 2005, it has grossed more than £134 
4 million pounds for the Welsh economy alone and 256 million pounds in GVA and supporting 94.5 FTE jobs per series in the supply chain and the wider economy with 170 people roughly employed with 67% of them based in Wales. I think the Welsh government will be okay with a 1.1 million pound loss for the Doctor Who experience considering that on average since the show started production in Wales it's made about seven and a half million pounds per year for Wales. And this is something that's not just specific to Doctor Who but specific to the BBC as well. For every one pound spent on the license fee the UK economy gets three pounds back which is why it is economic illiteracy to defund the BBC or to get rid of the license fee. I know a guy that claims he can shove his entire fist up his ass. Can he get 1.1 million for a street performance? Davies also claims that despite the success of his doc- Bowstrek brought that analogy up absolutely unprompted. I think that he needs to look at the mirror when it comes to the quote degeneracy or needing to be on some kind of list. What unhinged bullshit. Doctor Who reboot past tense the bbc doesn't have him contractually tied down nope he's got disney shareholders tied down without lube it's kind of a rolling contract what the fuck does that even mean genuinely what does that even mean watch out for that rolling thievery it's coming down the mountain and it's feeling frisky it's very free so is that pile of vomit on the sidewalk but that doesn't mean i want to interact with it look if i had enough tomorrow oh russell the pompous twit you'll never have enough you narcissistic jackass i could walk up Wait, he's not even waiting to the end of a sentence to get his jibes in this is like obvious insecurity like he knows he's got nothing so in order to try and like virtue signal strength and authority and being right about something which he knows he's not right otherwise he would have cited actual examples here then he has to like interject constantly because he knows that what's actually on screen what he's actually reading out isn't bad enough for his audience to get mad at he needs to like poison the well a thousand times over or get walked out if that disney takeover ever happens well i wouldn't walk out then they'll just call the cops and you'll be featured on one of them youtube police arrest videos squealing like a stuck pig because i wouldn't let considering that one of the last videos i talked about from bolstrek was him thinking that lgbtq plus people are illegal i think he's just saying because you're a gay man you'll be arrested that's just it he thinks that russell is a degenerate creator just because he's a gay man like there's not even like dog whistles anymore it's like a studio speaker system for nazi rhetoric like unambiguously here once again, I want to emphasize here that I don't just call every conservative that I don't like a Nazi. There's only like maybe one or two individuals that I've done response and reaction videos to that I would call Nazis, Bolstrek being one of them. It's like people saying, why do you keep on calling Nerdrotic a Nazi? I don't. I call him a Nazi platformer because he's platformed Bolstrek, who is indisputably a Nazi and is known in the community for being a Nazi. Ergo, Nerdrotic is a Nazi platformer and gives Bolstrek a platform to say categorically bullshit stuff like... And, and let's not forget, um, a white dude is the villain. Uh, and yeah. we've... A reminder, in Fugitive of the Jadoon, these were the white males he was referring to. The victim complex is so strong, he'll just imagine white people so he can get angry at them. Let people down. You already did that, Russell, and baby Jesus doesn't like lies. But nothing could trap me. Not even with your level of thievery. I would never be in a situation where I had to write things. Well, what you do now isn't really writing. It's pontificating, and it's quite grating. I'm talking as though... Such as? That's about to happen. That's not about to happen. Despite the wishes of pretty much everyone that isn't a deviant. I love it. I think you love yourself, Russell, not much else. But I mean, oh. I think he's kind of right here. All the Nazis do want Russell gone. Everybody else is kind of happy with him. <laughs> oh my God, I'd never be stuck sitting somewhere going, I must do five years here. Never. I'm too old for that now. Well then, perhaps you should retire with all that shareholder money. You're a funny man, Russell, a very funny man. And that's it for today. Follow me on X and until next time, suck it. So yeah, that was informative. What do Nazis think of Doctor Who? They're not a big fan. I'll see you folks next time. What a moron I am.